Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Samuel, and we are very excited to be here today talking about podcasting. Now, podcasters have been using Zoom gear for years, and we have loved watching them adopt all of the recorders we had made for musicians and audio for video, um, videographers, sound design, um, but adopting them for their podcasting needs. But in the last year, we have released some recorders and accessories specifically designed for podcasters with those little features that only podcasters require. So to help me talk about gear and talk about podcasting in general, I have a very special guest joining me today, Ming Chen. Now, Ming was an early adopter in podcasting. He was a key architect behind Kevin Smith's Smodcast Network back in 2007, where he was in charge of all of the technical aspects, as well as the design and marketing of their online presence. And as they grew, Ming became a podcast host and co-host himself and made a name um, for himself in the industry, and we are very excited and very lucky to have him with us today. Um, and before I bring him on, I would like to encourage you to please ask as many questions as you'd like in our chat, um, either for myself or Ming, technical or otherwise, and we will do our best to answer as many as we can. And with that, I'd like to welcome Ming Chen. Ming, how you doing? I'm doing great. What's up, everybody? Uh, hello, Zoom. Hello, Long Island. And hello, Samuel. It's a it's it's an honor to meet the man behind the product YouTube videos. Um, <laughs> just countless amount of times, like, oh man, how do I do this? I look up the video, YouTube video. There you are, uh, and uh, very clear, concise instructions. Uh, you've saved me a lot of time and heartache. I want to say so. <laughs> you've definitely been a lifesaver. So thank you very much. And uh, it's an honor being on with you guys for sure. Uh, it is great, great to have you with us, Ming. So, um, so we're going to be talking about a lot of things. Um, something, some stuff just about podcasting, some stuff about gear, and um, and uh, I think we're going to have some fun. So to start off, I gave a little intro on you, Ming. But why don't you tell us, um, you know, how did you get to where you are today in podcasting? Uh, I started out with the Kevin Smith Smodcast Network. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Kevin Smith, he is one of the top podcasters in the game. Uh, everybody's favorite independent filmmaker. Uh, but I think now, more than filmmaking, more than writing, more than anything, I think people know him as a podcaster. Um, and he's been a big influence not only on me, but on uh, countless podcasters. Just because uh, if, if you know Kevin, he likes to talk. He <laughs> likes to say whatever he wants doesn't really like rules and uh with that with that you know with those kind of parameters podcasting was the perfect uh medium for him um, i know he gave it a go at radio for one day and found it too <laughs> restrictive and uh that was that was back before podcasting and then once he found this format i was like well i can i i, I can say whatever i want i can talk like i'm from new jersey if you know what i mean <laughs> and uh we're, we're, you know everyone's like well there's there's no restrictions so and uh, if you've ever heard Kevin do a live Q and A, you know he goes a minimum of three hours. So, <laughs> any time constraints that uh, you know a traditional media format would enact, try to enact on him, you know he he just couldn't work under those. So, um, uh, and he uh, Kevin, very self-deprecating guy, but the man is always a step ahead of everybody else. So uh, you know, independent filmmaking, he was there very early on. Uh, and then with podcasting, uh, he recorded his first episode in 2007. So that was very, very early on. And um, I was his, uh, I've been working with him for a number of years, uh, tech, you know, doing uh, IT stuff, technical, tech, <laughs> handing all his technology. So uh, I, even before I knew what a podcast was, uh, I was helping him upload podcasts and getting them on uh, iTunes. And, you know, back then I was writing RSS code, RSS feed code by hand. And, uh, you know, I, I, and then I, I'm a behind the scenes guy. Um, you know, I'm, uh, if you, if you've ever seen Spider-Man, uh, I'm the guy in the chair, you know, <laughs> I tell Spider-Man where to go and where all the bad guys are. I don't necessarily go out and start web slinging. Um, but with this, with podcasting, inevitably you get sucked in inevitably you start creating your own content. Uh, but it, it really took him to give me that push. He was like, Hey, I'm starting the Smodcast podcast network. I need other shows. I need other voices. I want you to start a podcast. And I'm like, I, I, I don't do this. I can't do this. You're funny. You're talented. You're Kevin Smith. I'm, I'm the guy who works for Kevin Smith. Like, why? How does that get me? You know, how does get that get me anywhere in podcasting? I was kind of under this misconception that uh, you had to be famous or you know you had to be a really good storyteller or you needed. I, I was like, I don't have any talent. He's like, Oh man, you don't need talent. Look at me. Um, you know, you just need to tell some good stories. So. 
And uh, I was like, so I, I, I was joking around, but I was like, what? I can start a, a podcast about comic books and pop culture and Star Wars and food. He's like, that's a podcast. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah. I'm like, who's? I asked him flat out. I was like, who's gonna listen to a random guy from New Jersey who who, who talking about comic Star Star Wars and food? And he's like, well, other people like comic Star Wars and food. That's your audience. And um, yeah. So you know, we uh, I I used cobbled together some gear back then. Uh, recorded an episode with uh, my podcast partner and fellow comic book man Mike Zapsik. And I think uh, from minute one. I think uh, I was like, wow, this is this is fun. This is cool. <laughs> I don't know what was holding me back. And um, yeah, we've been doing that. Uh, that was back in 2010. So it's been well over 10 years that I've been um, I've been doing this. And uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud of what we've recorded and, and built. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty proud that I, 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 I helped Kevin a lot of the technical aspects and kind of being an architect behind the uh, the, the early Smodcast network. Very, very cool. Now, how many podcasts are you involved with actively right now uh right now i do two uh one is called i sell comics which was the comic star wars and food kind of podcast um uh if you've ever watched the show comic book men that uh that that we're on uh we work out of kevin smith's comic book shop and new comics come out every wednesday so we hit on this idea that well we can just review the new comics that come out every week um that you know that that will ensure that we'll never run out of anything to talk about and you know, it'd be fresh content every Wednesday. So uh, that was the first one we started, and then uh, after after, and that was before that was before the TV show that we eventually got onto. Uh, but after that, we started going on these weird Comic Con adventures and things like that. So uh, we started another podcast just called simply the Ming and Mike Show, where we just talk about our uh, adventures, misadventures, getting into trouble, getting out of trouble, uh, things like that. And uh, I uh, yeah yeah. Um, I, I love that. You know, you're, you're not restricted to just one podcast. If you want to go off and start four of them, you totally can. You have that freedom. Absolutely. And that's, you know, been one of the fun things for me, my favorite podcasters, to see them go from kind of that first podcast podcast I listened to with them and where they moved on from there and, you know, kind of always getting better um, as, as a listener. It's always really fun to see, um, you know, that progression from, from that side. Um, now, you also... Um, own a podcast studio called the Shared Universe Podcast Studio. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. There's the logo up there, and there, there, yes, that is a full size Stormbreaker, just in case Thanos comes back. <laughs> um, so with uh, we, with all the podcasts we've recorded, um, uh, eventually we I somehow wound up on a uh, reality TV show based in a comic book shop called Comic Book Men. Um, uh, started hitting the Comic Con uh, circuit and just getting out there. Um, I think, uh, other than people coming up to us and saying that they loved the TV show, uh, what we really loved is when people would come up like, "Hey, I like the TV show. I love the podcast." And uh, you know that would, we would, you know, we, we would take a, a point of pride with that because uh, it, the, it, when you do a podcast, you control every aspect of it. You record it. You book your own guests. You you know you pick your own co-host. You create your own content every week, like every aspect uh, you control. So that really was a point of pride with us. Um, inevitably, though, the next question, uh, the next thing that, that they would say after, hey, I love your podcast, is you guys sound like you're having so much fun. How do we create a podcast? And how do we do it? How do we podcast? And I'm like, okay, I can tell you in 10 minutes, I guess. And and a lot of that, like step one would be like, okay, go buy a Zoom recorder or, <laughs> or some kind of piece of, like, yeah, no joke. It'd be, you know, buy a Zoom recorder and some microphones. Um, and that would kind of be their 10 minute lesson. But I was like a true, I truly wanted to, we, we'd always joked around about opening some kind of like a, a classroom or studio where we could sit down with people who really wanted to podcast for an hour or two and just tell them everything that we learned uh, so they wouldn't have to make the same mistakes that we did, and they could be up and running um, by the time we were finished. So um, it, it it was an idea we had kicked around, and then one day we just kind of decided to do it. And uh, we, we got some cheap office space, moved all our gear in there, uh, found uh, moved our we had a poker table that we would play Texas Hold'em on, that became our podcast studio table, and uh, and we opened up a shared universe podcast studio. So yeah, what we do here is we help people create and launch podcasts. We teach classes, uh, whether you're a beginner or you're experienced, uh, we have, we have, we, we're here to answer all of your questions. And, uh, 
The goal is uh, if you come here and you take a class, the goal is to hopefully have you come here and, and record every week. So um, I, I think the most the things that hold people back are one, the technical knowledge and two, the gear. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot to go through. It's a lot to to uh, to to learn about or consume. And we want to just take care of that for everybody so they can concentrate on just coming in and creating awesome podcasts. And I think that's one of the cool things, especially in the last few years. And and I know we've been a part of that, trying to make recorders that are easier to use for podcasters. But I think the the equipment has kind of caught up to make it, um, you know, a little bit easier to learn that technical side of things um, and give you, you know, and even those that know it more freedom to focus on the creative, which is really what matters in a podcast. Yeah, I'm I'm a proud Zoom creator for sure. So, I uh, I I love that you 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 guys have blended both worlds and uh, you know, Zoom creator Zoom creator. It's great. <laughs> so uh, so let's kind of transition into talking about gear. And okay. So I want to ask you, what was the last podcast episode you recorded, and what gear did you use to record it? Uh, so I actually recorded two podcasts this morning. One was for the local chamber of commerce, who's been co- they've been coming in every every two weeks and uh the chamber of commerce's goal is to uh bring awareness to all the businesses in their chamber so every two weeks they bring in a new business uh this week they brought in the uh the uh the spca uh the people who um you know you can go and adopt a dog or a pet from and uh so uh they, they come in uh, i i have right now in this in the studio that recorded them uh we have the l12 l12 uh humming uh mere feet away from me <laughs> um, I love that one because it's got the, I, I, I remember seeing that. I was like, wait, it's got a built-in recorder. Like I don't, uh, you know, be, prior to that, I, I, recorders were a separate, a separate piece of gear that you would have to output audio to. Mm. And, uh, for that purpose, we either use an H4, H5 or H6 to, to do the recording. And with it built in, um, I mean, that became the trump card right there. So, and, uh. Uh, and a lot of people were like, the L12, you got so many inputs on that, you know, for a podcast. Do you really need that many? And um, every so often, you never know when uh, we'll be podcasting. Uh, we've had eating contests, like wing. <laughs> we've had like, te- we've, we've used those inputs for sure. Um, you know, there's that one saying, you know, it's better to need it and not have it than have it. Or it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. And uh, that's, uh, that's where the L12 comes in. So that was the first podcast we did. I, and uh, I've been gearing them up with the the ZDM ones too, so I, I'm loving this microphone. It's uh, <laughs> and which I'm using right now. I'm, I I we need to sound clear as a bell, everybody. And uh, I think I'm coming through loud and clear here. Uh, and then uh, I went immediately from that one. Uh, we've been doing podcasts for uh, the local large independent film festival here, mm-hmm. and they're doing a hybrid festival next week. They're called the Garden State Film Festival. And uh, we live stream usually uh, about three hours worth of live streaming where we promote uh, their independent filmmakers. And for that one, I have the L- the L8 going over in that studio, um, which uh, I I also love as well. The uh, I, I I never thought I would see a battery operated mixing board that I could take to any location without power. And <laughs> uh, and uh, and one and one with such a great small form factor too is that I. These things travel with me, um, even the L12, which, uh, you know, it's a little bigger. But again, uh, if I, I've been to live events like, hey, how many microphones do you need? They're like, we need we're going to have eight people. I'm like, OK, L12 it is. So <laughs> <laughs> always, always good to have uh, all the equipment you need right there with you. So, um, yeah. you know, let's take a quick look at what we're using right now um, for our stream. And I have on my desk here a P8. Um, so um, the this is uh our latest podcasting recorder um, with with six inputs and I have it set up right now and and this is how I have Ming coming in on, on a video call um, this is kind of exactly how I would have it set up for for a podcast we were recording I have my microphone going in I have my USB port connected to my computer and Ming is coming in right on channel six here um, I have that set to the USB and um, and he is hearing me loud and clear. Um, that is part of the uh, the mix minus feature, which uh, this and our P4 recorder also has, which makes sure that uh, somebody on the other line is never going to hear an echo or feedback. Um, and you know that is one of the things that differentiates a podcasting recorder is um, you know that's one of those key features. You know, 
podcasters are bringing in remote guests and you need to be able to bring them in. Right now we're using the USB. We also have a TRRS input we could use if we wanted to hook up a phone to bring in that remote guest. Um, and then um, going to our stream, uh, we have our main outputs going into a separate piece of audio gear. And then this is my headphone that I'm listening to right here. So I hear Ming loud and clear um, coming in. And, um, and so that's just kind of kind of the setup we're using right now. Um, Ming, what percentage of the podcast you record are you bringing in remote guests? Uh, that's a great question. So uh, prior to the pandemic, I would say we were hovering probably about 10 or 15 percent. Um, it was an occasional thing, and that was for a couple reasons. Um, one, nobody knew what a you know a out, like a video conference was before the pandemic. Um, I think a lot of people use Skype. Um, you know, if I'm going to mention brand names, you know, Skype, but uh, I, we, I was kindly telling podcasters, like, listen, you're as, as much as I loved having them in the studio and we really encouraged like a face to face interaction. I was like, listen, you're not, you know, we have the internet now. You can dial some guy in the, uh, you can dial a guest from the Himalayas if you have to, as long as they have an internet connection. And I think a lot of people were hesitant. I think the, the technology and it seemed daunting to them. It was like, what, I got to talk to my computer and, and, uh, that's yeah that's not going to work they in their head they couldn't fathom talking to another guest like me uh, you and i are doing now mm -hmm. um during and now and now uh with the pandemic uh everyone knows uh what a video you know how to jump onto a stream and talk to uh and do a conference uh because we were forced to do it and um you know if there were if i could only take one positive away from the situation we've been through last year is that everybody knows how to jump onto a remote call right now so uh, and that's helped us out a lot so now i would say we're almost we're probably about 40 percent of our podcasters will have a remote guest um for two reasons one uh because it's necessitated by from social distancing but two they realized that the the whole world had opened up um everybody's used to it so uh, very rarely now do you hop onto a video call and say, like, "Hey, do you, do you hear me? Can you see me?" Like everybody is set up now, so uh, it's um, so it's you know being able to get someone in re remotely now. Yeah, it's it's about forty percent of our business, and it's it's very important that getting audio into and out to your remote guest uh, is quick and easy. And, and I think the other thing. Um you know, and I totally agree, you know, people being more familiar with video conferencing software has helped a lot, um, especially being that the video conferencing software tends to have better audio quality than using just the regular phone app on your phone to bring in a remote guest, um, which is, you know, what, what a lot of people have done and will still do. Um, but these video conferencing apps have a better audio quality. And overall, that's going to give you a better podcast. Yeah, for sure. You're not going to get that, that I, there's, you know, that phone muffle and the static and, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's just it's just way better, and um, you know even if you are in a video conference and and uh, and the software is recording you, oftentimes it's compressed, so it doesn't sound as good. Uh, you know if you can record the audio on your end, um, and use that for your final product, uh, it's going to sound so much better. Very cool. So question that came in um, kind of related to this, um, and especially having most of your guests now being remote. Um, what does a pre-production meeting look like for a podcast? Like, how do you how do you deal with that prepping a guest um, before you actually are recording that podcast? Uh, I I'll, I'll try to get them at least 50, ten or fifteen minutes on early so we can uh, work on any technical issues. Um, unfortunately, there are some things that you can't control. Uh, internet connection on their end, uh, you can't really control that. Uh, oftentimes, if uh, and. Even in this day and age in 2021, uh, either you know Wi-Fi. Uh, if if your if your mother turns on the micro uh, the microwave to microwave a cup of coffee or soup, that can knock out your signal or slow it down. You know weird little things like that. Some people still have like the 2.4 gigahertz wireless phones that slow it down. Um, so you know definitely definitely that's something that we try to plan for. Um, uh, either yeah, it's like listen, I, I don't know how. I guess a majority of people don't hardwire in anymore. But even we found a majority of the time, if the Wi-Fi is bad, uh, having them join in on their smartphones uh, as an alternative uh, actually works even better than a laptop or a desktop. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, uh, 
my 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 fear was that the interaction would be lost um talking to a computer screen and um on, honestly uh, here in new jersey or if you've seen comic book men we make fun of each other a lot um i'd say that probably consists about 95 percent of most of our podcasts <laughs> and i was afraid i was like well can you make fun of can i make fun of my podcast co-host across a computer screen and i think within like three seconds after of us firing it up and recording our first remote episode i was like okay this is gonna work so <laughs> <laughs> so this is gonna work yeah other than that uh you know i we don't do a ton of a uh, ton of prep you know we check connections check camera uh check audio obviously um but i, I think now a year into the pandemic and a year of us making remote calls i think a, most people have figured it out for sure and um and just the the tools available have improved and become way more user friendly. Yeah, and I think um, you know you're kind of right on that technical aspect of bringing in that guest is really that's the real pre production is is yeah. making sure that you're going to be able to bring them in and that it's going to be as stable as it could possibly be. Um, you know, even you and I did some prep for this, and um, you know you you'll, you know you're talking about questions you might ask and things, and you're like, oh, we, we kind of want to start talking about it now just because we're we're so excited about it. But you're kind of you know, well, let's say let's save it for the stream yeah. or save it for the podcast, and um, and so. We're gonna transition now. We're gonna um, we're gonna leave gear for a second, and we're gonna do a little lightning round question. Okay, are you ready, Ming? Absolutely. All right. First one. What is your favorite podcast you're listening to right now? Oh man, I have I have so many. Uh, we we uh, we have uh, I guess I call it kind of a sister podcast or uh, one of our fellow podcasters. Uh, the two other guys on Comic Book Men, uh, Walt Flang and Brian Johnson along with Brian Q. Quinn from uh, the TV show Impractical Jokers, they have a podcast called Tell Them Steve Dave. And uh, it's their brand of humor. Uh, they make fun of me mercilessly on this podcast. <laughs> but And even so, I love them to death. So uh, this podcast called Tell Them Steve Dave. That's, that's within the family. Uh, I'm a big sports guy, and I love the ESPN 30 for 30 documentaries. Mm. And I think the most brilliant thing they did was take it was in addition to the TV documentaries, they took it and they made a podcast series out of it. And it is, uh, it is amazing. And, uh, you know, they, they release theirs in seasons and there, there are gaps between seasons. And it, it was almost like waiting for the next season of Game of Thrones or the next Mandalorian. <laughs> it's like, come on, why, why do we got to wait so long? It's like, well, they have to make it. And I was like, oh, man. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, just these kind of inside uh Podcast docu sports documentaries, I guess you could call it, um, done as only ESPN can do it. Uh, really, really, really amazing. Uh, I'm I, I have a small business, and uh, so I need, um, I I need inspiration. So I love stuff like uh, you know how I built this with Guy Raz. Uh, I I listen to Gary Vaynerchuk uh, pretty much every day just to get. Even, you know, even if I don't even particularly know what he's talking about, his energy is like, all right, this is, you know, this is this is the kind of guy I want to be one day, you know, with this much energy. And I mean, in the end, you know, guys like Gary, guys like Kevin, what they do is that they go on, they record podcasts, they try to inspire other people. They tell other people, like, listen, we, you know, we, we got to where we got through hard work, a little bit of luck and uh, just being persistent. But we're passing on our knowledge to you. And not only that, we're, we're telling you that just you could do this, too. And uh, I love I, I love podcasts. I love I love helping other people out. Um, and that's uh, you know the, the things that they have taught me. I want to pass on to other people as well. Um, yeah, I think I got into this just because I love great stories. So uh, you know, any uh, I I think this American Life was one that I've been listening to forever. And uh, I know that's kind of like an obvious favorite, but it's 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 so good. It's so good just hearing these great stories told from with a with a different twist for sure. Very, very cool. What uh, what was the first microphone you ever purchased? I am trying to remember that. Um, I I want to think. I I think on some kind of random suggestion, we got like an Audio Technica condenser microphone. Like I didn't even know what I was doing. I was like, why isn't this working? I was like, well, you need phantom power, dummy. I was like, what's that? Um, all this, all these things, and I, and you know, it's it's it it worked out okay for our purposes. Uh, after that, we were actually gifted a set of Shure, Mic Shure 55 SH microphones, mm -hmm. uh, aka the Elvis microphone, and uh, we we use those on a on a pretty regular basis. Um, it sounds great, but I think I think more than anything, uh, in our kind of selfie obsessed 
society. People love taking a photo with that microphone. Um, and then, uh, yeah, though I think those are the first two that, that we acquired way back in 2009, 2008, uh, 2008, 2009, 2010. Those were, those were ones. And uh, they, they worked okay, but uh, I, you know, I, I, um, I'm sure now I, I, if I were to go back in time, I would probably, I would probably, uh, I would probably invite myself to, to get maybe some different ones. <laughs> so uh, what was the longest podcast you've ever recorded? That's a great question. Um, so I, I've been known to go on some marathons, uh, either, you know, different podcasts all in one day. I think I did five different shows in one day. I think that might be my record. But the longest one, um, I think back in May, uh, we have a local music venue called The Saint. Uh, Bruce Springsteen and a lot of big Jersey musicians uh, have play, play there, have played there. Uh, they were trying to just stay afloat. And uh, me and my friend Taylor decided to do a benefit, an online live stream podcast benefit to help them raise money. And I think we went we went almost eight hours. So, wow. um, yeah, <laughs> that was cool, though. We brought in other remote musicians to play live. Uh, we had some pre-recorded, but a lot of them wanted to do it live. And we had planned on maybe going for four, but that just that stretched out to eight that we were having so much fun. <laughs> Very cool. What um, what is your favorite comic book? <laughs> that's a that's a great question. Um, man, they say that's like that's like asking you know what uh you know who your favorite kid is or or what's your favorite Star Wars character. Um, that's that's a tough question. I'm gonna have to go with uh, Avengers number two fourteen, and that one's purely sentimental because it was my it was my the first comic book that I ever got. Uh, when I was in first grade, one of my fellow classmates handed me that, that copy, that issue, and I'd never seen anything like that before. Um, I, you know, I knew what comics were. I knew Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman were, but I never, I don't think I had ever really like touched a comic book up until that point. Um, up until then it was, uh, you know, it was Jack and Joe go up the hill. It was <laughs> things that they would hand little kids to read, you know, small little books, but when someone gives you a copy of the Avengers and there's a picture on the cover of Ghost Rider fighting Iron Man on the foreground in the background, you see Captain America and Tigra, you know, just in the, uh, and you're six years old. You're like, what, whoa, whoa, what is this? I, <laughs> I, I can't comprehend this. My mind can't process this. Uh, so I read that thing cover to cover, uh, every page, every panel, every word, every ad for whoopee cushions, <laughs> and uh, you know, get a hundred army men for an X-ray specs. Uh, there were ads in there for the local, uh, the the Saturday morning cartoons at the time. I consumed that thing cover to cover, and uh, that uh, yeah, that that's definitely. I mean, I and I still have that. I kept that issue all these years. I still, I still have it in a long box somewhere, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's one I always treasure because it was, it was my very first one. What would, what is your favorite comic book adaption? Oh man! I mean, I think my my definitely my favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe movie is uh, the first Iron Man. I think that's uh, that's pretty much the perfect movie, and uh, you know most people consider that the one that kind of launched the whole universe. And uh, I yeah, I think uh, John Favreau. You know, we, I mean, we can't say enough good things about him. Everything that guy touches turns to gold. But not only that, he's a fan, and so we you know we that I. Uh, you know, I don't think fans have anything bad to say about him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that first Iron Man movie is is great, and Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. There's there is no one else that could play that role, and uh, I think that uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, I, I, he just did does such a great job with uh, with that movie, and uh, I think just the timing couldn't have been better. And uh, I'm I. You know, growing up, we didn't we didn't have much, and we read the comics, and our dream was to see these comic books turn into a live action, big budget, well written adaptation. Um, but up until you know, when I was a kid, uh, they were missing two things: the big budget and the great writing. So, <laughs> so they would just kind of put out you know whatever cheap costume character they could get out there for like a, a minimum you know the minimum budget, and you know so. And and we we watched it and we loved it because that's all we had, but you know now we have Avengers Endgame, we have Captain Marvel, we have uh, we have WandaVision, we have 
Uh, and and we have Falcon Winter Soldier, and that's not even a movie. Like that's they put that on a TV streaming platform. It's it's a great time to be. It's a great time to be a, a geek, my friends. <laughs> very very cool. All right, so we're gonna wrap up the lightning round, and we're gonna jump into. Um, some questions about general podcasting, and um, and some of these I wrote, and some of these um, uh, some friends of mine um, who are podcasters were gracious enough to write for me. Um, Amazing. So, um, you know, a lot of people talk about how much podcasting is growing. We could talk about stats and all of that, but from your view, you know, you've been at it now for 14 years. You know, where was podcasting 10 years ago? Where is it today? And where do you see it in five years? So I think uh, podcasting back, say, 2007 to 2010, 2011, um, there weren't a lot of people doing it. Uh, I think uh, it seemed like, uh, you know, some, uh, it seemed like it started, a lot of people podcasting were famous people who love technology. So uh, I think back then, I, I want to remember, like Ricky Gervais was a big podcaster back then. Uh, you kind of had the plan to see Adam Carolla was around back then, uh, some of the early, early Joe Rogan. And then you had Kevin. And the uh, and, and people would listen to them, but I don't think people have ever considered creating back then. And um, I, I love doing this. I love being, being early to everything. And I... I, I had a feeling it was going to become easier to do and more accessible to everybody. I just didn't know when. Um, so uh, I, I went through many, many steps to <laughs> to to get each and every episode out. Uh, I had to learn and make a lot of mistakes along the way. I think probably back then, though, the the, the biggest thing, the biggest question was, what what is a podcast? Podcasting, what is that? And it was tough to explain. I was like, all right, it's kind of like internet radio, but not really. It's, it's, and I, I hated using the word radio too, because it's not, it's not, I'm like, it's not radio. It's, it doesn't go, it's not really broadcast across radio waves. You put it on and it's accessible to the whole world. I was trying to convey this to everybody. Um, it, I think back then, it, it almost felt like pirate radio to me back then, although it was legal. <laughs> but I felt it was, you know, I felt I felt it was more like very underground, and the people who listened to it kind of jumped through a couple hoops to get to it. So I really, I think I really love that aspect because uh, I'm a huge fan of the Christian Slater movie from 1990, Pump Up the Volume. Um, that movie, uh, that movie influenced a lot of the things we do here. So, uh, yeah, going on though, you, I think. Um, Maybe about 2013 on, that's when we started getting the questions like, hey, how do I how do I do this? What do I do? What do I need to buy? How do I upload this? How do I get this onto like a distribution service? And uh, I think that's kind of when more of the, 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 the kids who love technology was like, wait, I can do this too. I can be Kevin Smith. I can be Adam Carolla. Um, I, can, I can do like the stuff that Ming does. And uh, I was, yeah, I, I love... I, I love discovering something early and then when everybody else was like, what's that? I love being that I know stuff. I know a good amount about it that I can pass on my knowledge. I think that's one of my favorite things in life, um, whether it be podcasting or like a cool restaurant that I discovered in a weird city. <laughs> I love passing on that knowledge. And um, so I, I think I saw more of from kind of 2013 to, you know, fairly recently, it's when I saw more of the technically minded people going, oh, okay, I, all I need is a recorder and a microphone and, you know, I record onto an SD card or under my hard drive and I can upload. It's like, yeah, 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 here, let me, let me show you how. And uh, those, it, it, was, it was nice for me because uh, I could just explain it to them. I didn't necessarily have to show them. They could grasp the, uh, the technology. But, yeah, as the years have gone and the technology and the, and the ease of use have, uh, have advanced, um, so have uh, so has the podcast population, and uh, and and um, you know until now this pandemic I think so we've gotten so many people who they're like oh man I, I they were planning on starting podcasts they wanted to do it like oh I don't have time and then all of a sudden we had nothing but time and they decided to take the plunge and I was I was pretty happy that I was there to be like oh you want to start here this is this is this is what you do let me show you um, it was. In in some ways, it was like, man, this is what I prepared for the last ten years for almost was so I could help other people out. 
very. Uh, but very... now, yeah, you now, I jeez, I I think every uh, um, everybody knows what a podcast is now. From everyone from uh, you know the ninety eight year old grandmother um, to uh, little kids, they 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 all know podcasts. They listen to podcasts. Some of them even create podcasts. It's uh, it's a it's pretty cool. And where where do you see it five years from now? I mean. It, you know, is it more the same, just bigger, or do you see changes coming? Um, I see. Uh, I, I like. I, I think. I, I would love. I like. I've podcasted with my mom and dad, um, but I really had to. I had to pull teeth and twist arms to do that. <laughs> uh, I think in ten years and five to ten years, my parents might be able to start their own podcast. Like they'll, they will want to. Um, at least that's that's where I hope it goes. Um, also, when we started the studio, I was kind of like, okay, this is great. Uh, it's going to be audio only, and I don't have to mess with video. Uh, there will be no video element. That's something I'm not really familiar with. You know, I know, you know, I know some fringe things, but I'm going to leave that to the video production guys. Um, then all of a sudden, we're doing streaming. Uh, we're doing video, video, video conferencing. Uh, we're putting things onto social media. And... Uh, and you know, I, I and I keep up with the technology. So at first we were streaming for fun, and then it became a part of our business. So uh, I think video comp accompanied by quality audio is definitely where the future is going. I think uh, just the, the 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 fact that we can press a button and go live, anybody off a smartphone, um, off a computer, off a laptop, off of a device, is is definitely the future. We're definitely things are definitely going visual, things are going live streamed. Um, especially, you know, I know the world's kind of coming back now and we're going to have large gathering of events, but the way we dealt with that was by streaming the events that we were going to have. And so people at home could consume them. Uh, I think now it's going to be a hybrid. We're going to have these huge, uh, like a San Diego Comic-Con, but we're going to, there's going to be a, uh, like a at home, a huge at home live element for the people who can't afford the hotels, for the people who couldn't get tickets. Uh, for the people who couldn't travel all the way to San Diego, um, we're, we're going to need live streaming. And with that, we're going to need great gear to be able to facilitate those live streams. And, uh, yeah, that's going to – it's big now, but it's going to be even bigger in five to ten years. Very, very cool. So uh, so this question coming from a podcaster, you know, how do you approach the balance between growing an audience and maintaining the audience you already have? <laughs> that's uh, – I mean, that's – that's a that's a tough one. Um, so maintaining the audience, uh, it, well, it, even just getting that uh, getting a audience is is a feat in and of itself. Um, so the people who start out here, that's probably the that's probably one of their main questions. Well, how, how do I get an audience? I'm like, just keep at it, keep creating, uh, release an episode once a week. Uh, you know, be dedicated to it, be consistent, and you will get that audience. And once you kind of find out, uh, you know, why, you know, what has kept them with you after, say, 10 episodes or 100 episodes, um, you, uh, you know, you, you definitely want to, uh, you definitely just, you want to make, you, you want to create your own show, but you want, you want to make them happy as well. See, the growing the audience is, 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 is tough. I mean, there, there are definitely strategies um, you can, you can enact. I, I always tell people, it was like, listen, if, it's um it's like opening up a small business, creating a podcast. You don't just open up a small business and and you sit there like, all right, I'm open. Everybody come and buy my stuff. You you got to tell people that you're there. So we have at our disposal, uh, you know, one of the ultimate marketing, many of the ultimate marketing tools, and they're free. So we have social media. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. Uh, I mean, a multitude of things that you. That people, you know, you've probably got followers already, and that you you need to tell people that you've released a new episode, that you've uh, that that you have a new that you have a podcast. You need to tell people that you're there. And there's so many, you know, uh, strategies that you know throw up a throw up throw up a little clip on uh, on your Instagram stories. Um, you know, post a photo of you and the last person that you podcasted with. Um, you know, ask get interaction. From people following you, uh, you know, what do you want us to talk about next? Uh, you know, who's your favorite Avenger? Um, you know, what did you think of this? Uh, things like that. Get them to interact with you, but uh, instead of answering their question by typing, do it on your podcast so they listen to your to your question. 
Uh, but yeah, grow, growing is tough. It's work. It's another job to market your podcast. Um, you know, it just doesn't happen overnight. Um, you know, even even Kevin, his first few episodes, he was famous already. So, you know, he had kind of a built-in audience. But the way he grew that audience from, you know, I think at first he was getting maybe 100,000 when he started. And he, he's got to be up into the millions now. Was he went out there, he did live shows. He went to people's towns and did live versions of his podcast. He released an episode every week. He interacted with his audience, um, even though he was famous already and he, they were there already. He took a lot of steps to uh, to to help grow that audience. So it's a it's a tough balance for sure. Uh, you know, if you have that audience already, yeah, you want to you you definitely want to. I don't want to say I don't want to use the word cater to them, but you know, you want to keep the same elements that brought them there in the first place. Um, yeah, grow. Uh, yeah, growing is tough. I, I, um, another thing I tell people is like, hey, uh, if you have guests on your show, uh, you know, guests on their show as well. You know, cross, cross the audiences. Guests on other podcasts. Uh, you know, if they guest on yours, then you can cross promote. Um, they, yeah, there's so many different strategies. But I, we have, we, we have. Uh, you know, even even if you hop on, uh, you know, create like a Canva motion, you know, motion graphic to advertise your podcast. It's going to be a little work. You're going to take some time, but it'll it'll pay off in the end. Very, very cool. So, uh, you know, people listening to podcasts, you know, some of them are on Spotify, some are on Apple Podcasts. They're listening in all different places. Um, there, You know, there's distribution companies now that make it easy to make sure your podcast gets onto all of those places. But once they're there, um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, your audience tends to listen in, in one place. Uh you know, when that's happening, do you kind of lean in and say, OK, I'm going to advertise directly to this platform? Or do you try to really spread that audience across every, everything and try to grow it equally? How do you approach that? I uh, I mean, I, uh, I I play Texas Hold'em, so I will play the hot hand. You know, if I know, you know, 75 percent of the people are listening on, say, a Spotify or iTunes. Uh, yeah, I will. I will definitely encourage that. Uh, for me, if that's how they found it, uh, obviously they. It, it was it was very intuitive. Um, that's what they were on. So I was like, I was like, okay, well they must they must be doing something right to attract that percent of audience there. Um, yeah, I, I would absolutely, uh, I would absolutely, uh, um, you know, that's my home run hitter right there. So I would definitely slot them in at the cleanup position. Um, that being said, the uh, with the distribution platforms, uh, submitting your feed to, uh, you know, I submit it to everything. Like I don't know where people are going to find our show. Um, so, and it's, it's, um, it's pretty easy to get it distributed across multiple platforms. So uh, definitely, uh, it, you know, if you can submit to something and, you know, maybe there aren't that many people listening to it that you know of, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to stop distributing to that platform. I'm going to keep going. And uh, yeah, I've, um, I'll even put audio. If I don't have a video version, I'll put audio versions with a still image on, onto YouTube. I don't know if someone might stumble upon it there and go, wow, this guy's kind of funny. I'm going to keep listening to it. So, uh, and, and uh, some people live on the platform that they prefer. So um, I'm not, I, I don't discourage the, the, you know, the smaller marketed ones, but uh, I'll, I, I will lean in. If I find out there's a heavy percentage on a platform, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll definitely lean in that for sure. Totally. And it's almost like, you know, if that's where the listeners are, you can also end up getting up in the rankings there and yep. kind of fueling that fire um, can, can help you get even higher for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So um, off podcast for a second, somebody sent in this question and, and I'd okay. like to know this, too. Um, OK. You know, you do these open box videos <laughs> and, uh, you know, how did that evolve? Is, is that something you always did? Like, where, where did that start? No, I mean, I'll be honest. I heard about that. I guess that's that, that nine-year-old kid making like 20 million opening toys. And I was like, wait, I I do that every day here. I open up, you know, I'm opening up gear. Um, sometimes I'll get candy. Like I, I, I get a lot of, we get a lot of random stuff sent here. Um, some at my request, not all of it, but, um, and then, you know, running the studio, I get all kinds of gear. Like half the, half the fun of operating your own podcast studio is you you can justify and testing out new gear and if you don't like it um luckily say at amazon or, or you know as a very liberal return policy 
So if you don't like it, you can send it back. And uh, and I was like, okay, well, why not show everybody? You know, what? Why not? It, it to me, it's like Christmas. If I, uh, you know, if if I get a PodTrack P4, I'm gonna tell everybody that I got this. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna go through every dial and button and switch. Uh, you know, like I, I'm doing it for the first time along with them. And I, I love, uh, I love telling other people, but I love sharing that experience. And uh, yeah, I think a lot of that did start with toys, though. I would, we, I would go and buy, uh, like the a uh, life-size Baby Yoda, and, um, you know, while it's fun opening it by yourself in your own room, like why not share that live experience with everybody else? So, I think, I think, and I think a lot of it also stems. Uh, I didn't get like really awesome Christmas presents when I was a kid, <laughs> so now is my chance to to kind of spread that love to everybody else. Right on, right on. What are um. You know, kind of. What are some general mistakes you you see beginner podcasters doing that they should try to avoid? Uh, I see. Well, one, I always tell podcasters like, um, you know, if you're gonna do it, try to dedicate yourself to it, um, at least a little bit. I try to, I try to get our podcasters to record an episode for release on a weekly basis, and and, um. I think uh, remember when TV shows used to come out uh, the same time every week uh, before streaming platforms and binge watching yep. kind of messed <laughs> that up. Uh, I think we're still ingrained into that once a week schedule. So um, yeah, I'm like, if you're going to really, at least if you're going to get an audience, that audience is going to expect an uh, episode every week. So plan on that. And if you start getting big gaps, you may lose listeners. So uh, my analogy is like, uh, you know, Game of Thrones or Mandalorian, they would release every Friday. And imagine, you know, you saw just this huge cliffhanger and you went into tune in the next week at the same time. They're like, you know what? We didn't really put we didn't really feel like putting on an episode this week. Maybe we'll put one out next week. We're not really sure. Uh, we'll let you know, maybe. And, you know, I would probably stop watching after a while if they got that inconsistent. So, um, yeah, so that was one of them. Um, I think, uh, I, I, people just have, I think, uh, otherwise I think, uh, I think his gear actually holds a lot of people back too. They don't know what to buy. They don't know if it's going to be, um, I see a lot of podcasts actually buy gear that's way over their heads. I'm like, you don't need, why'd you buy that? You don't need all this. You don't, why, you don't need all the, all this stuff on here. Like it's only, you know, there are two or you have two or four podcasters here. Why, why are you? overdoing it and uh i think uh, i try to steer them i was like you know just the simpler the better and uh that will reduce a lot of headaches so many times i, I you know I, a friend would be like hey i i you know i think i set something off i think uh, can you come and help me i'm like oh you know they'll, they'll hit a couple buttons accidentally on you know stuff that did they didn't even need and uh it threw them off you know it postponed their episode for a couple of weeks <laughs> so uh yeah i think uh, i think that's one and uh, the other one's just very simple. Uh, you and I were wearing headphones. And I see so many podcasters like, oh, I, I don't want to mess up my hair. Um, I don't like the one. The one that cracks me up is uh, they don't wear headphones because they don't like hearing themselves. And I'm like, OK, listen, if you don't like hearing yourself, maybe this isn't the format for you. <laughs> but I'm like, get used to wearing the headphones. It's going to make your podcast sound so much better. Uh, so many times I hear people way back here and they're like, why didn't my, why is my podcast sound so bad? I was like, well, you weren't listening to yourself. Wear the headphones. Um, Zoom has the ZDM one and the headphone combination. You have no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> they're packaged in the same box. You can get it for a very reasonable price. Wear the headphones. I, uh, I cannot stress that enough. Very, very cool. Um, you know, this is a question coming in from uh, from somebody watching. What aspects of you know, kind of the full workflow of putting together a podcast episode are, are very easy to overlook, but definitely shouldn't be? Um, I think the aforementioned, yeah, wearing the headphones is <laughs> is definitely one of them. Um, I mean, I, I, I the, the gear is pretty much foolproof at this point. I mean, you know, you do want to adjust your levels uh, and you know, your headphone volumes, make sure that you have enough room on your SD card, uh, which, you know, one of my favorite features on, on, on the Zoom gear, you, you see how much time has elapsed. You also see how much time is left on the card. So, you know, you don't run out of space. Uh, that's very important that you can see all of that at a glance. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, other, it's, other than that, 
Uh, I mean, I have some podcasters who, who want to learn how to edit, so uh, I, I run them through that. But it's, I, I, I want to say it's, very, it's just very simple to start up right now, uh, especially with the gear at hand. And, um, uh, you know, if you want to go at it doing yourself, I know a lot of people, and for the people who, who don't, that's what we're here for. But even if you, we, we encourage uh, people, if you have a podcast and you're doing it yourself, come in here once a month. And, uh, you know, get out of your kitchens or basements and do it here. Come here. We're here if you need to ask for advice on anything, um, uh, for sure. Uh, a lot of it, because I know there are people who, you know, more of the technically minded are just people who who love doing every, you know, they, they like having the control and doing it on their own schedules and doing it themselves. So, um, but, yeah, I, um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I, it's it's. I, I try to tell people, you know, it's not rocket science. Like your, I, th I think just the preparation. I think your content is what you, what your your creation style is the thing that you want to focus on. And uh, I, for every one of my 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 podcasts, uh, yeah, I try to, you know, I come up with uh, what I want to talk about. I will do preparation. Um, you know, I record once a week, so you know, I have that week to prepare for the next episode. I actually try to. I used to write everything down by hand. Uh, I'm on the notes of uh, things I wanted to talk about. I've since moved to a digital format. That way, I can send notes to whoever I'm podcasting with as well. But um, and they're not complicated notes. I have bullet points. Uh, you know, like talk about the Super Bowl. Uh, talk about the new Popeye's spicy fried chicken sandwich. <laughs> um, you know, things like that. Talk about your recent trip to Chicago. Uh, just. And they're very simple notes, but I love having them at a glance. So, you know, so I don't forget. I can't keep all that in my head. Very, very cool. Uh, this is another one coming in from somebody watching. How many podcast episodes have you recorded and lost <laughs> due to technical failure? And second part to that, um, have you ever had a podcast that you just, just you recorded, you listened back, and you just decided to scrap it? <laughs> That's a great question. So I'm very proud to say, uh, thanks to some very good gear that I have, and I, the, the, and I don't want to jinx myself, but in the 11, 12 plus years I've been doing this, I've lost one episode, and uh, that was totally my fault. Uh, I you know I can't blame the gear. I um, it may I may have been due to a, a hard drive failure. That one I couldn't explain. But I have I have legit I have lost one episode, and. Um, I think that that really that says a lot to you guys for sure. Um, that things like that help me sleep at night, and <laughs> millions of podcasters around the world is that you know if you hit record, uh, you know it's being recorded, and that, that definitely helps me sleep at night. Uh, you know, especially here at the studio, we can't lose episodes. It's the only thing we do here. Mm. Um, we to lose an episode, you're definitely going to lose that client, um, and you're going to get a bad reputation. So, um, yeah, that. You know, if it didn't help me sleep well at night before I had the business, it definitely does now. Um, uh, that being said, like I will, you know, I have, I will have a Zoom mixing board, but I'll have I have the audio backed up to another portable recorder uh, if it's that important. Um, if Kevin comes in here, we can't lose that episode. So I, you know, I will I will have have it backed up twice. And and why not? I have them here. I have some XLR cables or audio cables. Uh, if you can back it up, if you have the gear, back it up. It's literally the press of a button. Um, and the second question, I don't like to waste anything. So I'm, I mean, maybe I'm a little vain. I've kind of liked all the episodes I've done. You know, obviously some were more energetic and better than others. Um, but the, I guess a great thing about podcast, maybe if you do kind of have a mediocre episode, you can still put it up. And uh, a lot of the times what we have done this in the past if we did release maybe an episode that wasn't so great we'll record another episode making fun of that episode <laughs> like we'll use clips from the bad episode and make fun of it for another episode and that immediately makes it better right so so nothing goes wasted nothing goes wasted here very very cool um <clears throat> so coming from um a youtuber's perspective you know, what do you think of a YouTuber adding podcasting to their brand? Is it diluting what they do in their audience? Or for you, do those things go hand in hand and they can enhance each other? Um, it's definitely not diluting. And uh, I, um, I'll use this analogy because uh, we got a lot of, we, in the early days, we got a lot of people going, 
why are you just doing audio? Why not do video? It's so much more interesting. Like, why would you do just an audio podcast? I'm like, okay. Um, the audio podcast, you can consume passively, meaning you can listen to it as you're driving. You can listen to it as you're working out, uh, walking your dog. Um, you can listen to it. Uh, my wife listens to podcasts as she's trying to fall asleep. You can do it passively. Whereas uh, a YouTube video, you probably shouldn't be watching as you're driving. Or, you know, if you're running down a trail, uh, you can't look at a screen and run down a trail. You're, you know, you're going to trip over a log or something. Um, so that passive listening uh, opens up uh, not only a whole new audience, but um, it's just easier to consume in the long run. So if, uh, yeah, if you can either repurpose your YouTube content into an audio podcast, if, uh, you know, if, if, if the if just ripping the audio and putting up on a pl podcast platform is uh you know you don't have like huge gaps in there and and it works as an audio podcast it's so easy to 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 release it as an audio podcast as well uh that not only gives you another avenue to post your content it could potentially expand your audience somebody might find it on a podcast platform the audio and and decide to go watch the video that accompanies that as well um or if you there are a lot of YouTubers that do separate audio podcasts as well, just because uh, it's more of a conversation. You don't have to worry about visuals. Um, video, I love it. It's a pain in the butt. Um, you, you, you know, you, it's expensive. You got You need lighting. You need, um, you know, you, <laughs> you you need personality. Sometimes you need a background a, or a green screen. I don't know. It's, Adding that that many more elements means that many more elements can either go wrong or you have to worry about them. Um, whereas audio, couple mic, couple of these ZDM one microphones, uh, a recorder, and a co-host, bam, you got your audio podcast right there. It's just so much more easier, spontaneous, and uh, yeah, you really don't have to set that much up. So, uh, I would yeah, if you're uh, only a YouTuber, I, I would I would encourage you either take that audio and release it on a podcast platform or create uh, and or do a related audio podcast for sure. Very, very cool. So we got one last question for okay. you before we wrap it up. Coming in from somebody watching, have you ever had a hot mic and said something embarrassing that you <laughs> didn't mean to be heard? I don't think, I'm trying to think if I have. We've had a couple of our podcasters um do it a couple of times. I try not to let that happen either. Uh, you know, if we're going live, I always give them the warning. It's like, listen, I'm about to hit the go live button. Be careful what you say from this point forward. And that gives them the warning <laughs> to be like, okay, you know, it's time to be professional now and uh, not saying anything that you want. Don't want other people to hear. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it does happen. <laughs> uh, although, you know, for the recorded version, they're like, listen, speak freely we're just recording this we can edit anything you want out but for the live broadcast i really try to give people a heads up before i hit that record <laughs> button uh it is very important because uh you could get yourself in trouble so if you are a streamer uh yes be careful that <laughs> you've either either muted your track or muted all tracks or turned all the sliders down or um or just be careful what you say and give everybody else that you're recording a heads up that you're going live very nice. I actually am going to ask one more question because it came in, and I think it's great. Um, what is the best way to include an episode that is off your normal topic or brand onto your podcast? Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, there are a couple of ways you could go about that. Uh, one, you know, we, we, we'll just call it a bonus episode. So we may release it, you know, say you release every Monday. Maybe we'll put that one out on Friday and call it a bonus episode. Uh, it's an episode that your audience wasn't expecting on that day anyways and uh, you know you could record a, a quick introduction going hey uh you know we went a, we went a little off the off the rails on this episode but i think we're, we're we're giving it to you because we thought you would enjoy it uh you know let us know what you think um get some feedback on it it could spawn into another podcast for all you know uh your audience might enjoy it for sure um i think that yeah that might be the best way to do it uh a lot of people right now are doing things like uh, like patreons or you know uh, where the, uh, the the subscription service, uh, you know, you, you could release 
you could even monetize it as a bonus episode uh throw it up on a service like bandcamp even mm. um you know maybe have people pay like 50 cents for it or i think a dollar is a minimum on there so you know you might you might be able to monetize it even or 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 uh get it get it out get it back that way or i i mean if you've recorded it that's good content even if if it's off the track i would find you know use it definitely use it use it uh, you know, even if you want to find maybe a best of clip within that, that episode and put it up on your social media, tell people it's like, hey, we don't normally do this, but this is what we do like after dark or <laughs> on, our, on our off hours. Uh, but I would definitely not let it go to waste. Cool. Very cool. Ming, uh, I think you gave some gold out here today and we cannot thank you enough for uh, for joining us. Uh, maybe we'll even have you join us again in the future. Um uh, obviously podcasting um you know it's big right now i think we both think it will get bigger yeah. and um and we're very excited um here at zoom to be bringing the gear to make it happen ming you are out there helping the people make it happen and uh and we thank you for that <laughs> thank you guys uh yeah again thank you guys for helping me sleep better but most importantly thank you for helping us create here it's um it's yeah it's just been a joy working with your products and your staff and uh, I, I hope our relationship continues forever. Very, very good. Everybody that tuned in, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you can always reach out to us if you have any questions about podcasting. We are always here to help. And um, good luck and enjoy creating.